Okay, race fans, it's it's been a couple of hours I'm trying to get this system charged by vapor by temperature difference. And uh, it's now up to uh, 221, 222 PSI system. Got the valves off. Tank is cool, but it's it's uh, it was charging in after a half hour on the heating pad, charging in a few few tenths every second or two. It was interesting to note that when the cool breeze kicked up and the bottle was in insulated in the cardboard box with the heating pad on, but the cool breeze was able to flow through the outdoor coil. The charging rate went up noticeably. It was ticking off a tenth every half a second suddenly. And that goes to show what the uh, what the surface area of the uh, that huge coil is that coil is probably I don't know five or ten times the surface area of that can so very sensitive to delta T when the charging rates low but it's it's working on 75 towards 80 degrees this is going way too slow on the on the heating pad and so we're going to use a little magic trick called hot water. I guarantee you that water at 135 degrees Fahrenheit will heat that tank. And water has six times the heat capacity of air. So, and there's a whole lot more mass of water in there than there is in the little very thin low temperature element in that heating pad. So I'm going to pick up the can and set it down in the water and uh, go from there. Now the result with a hot water bath was it very quickly it's now 21 pounds 2.8 ounces and that has put in three ounces of refrigerant in a very short time. It also raised the pressure excuse me there bumbly bee up to oh, 234 still quite low but um, but uh, it's the same on both sides of the compressor so there cannot be cannot be any kind of over pressurization on the compressor it doesn't take very long for that pressure to propagate through the system in theory it's instantaneous so there, there cannot in any case be an excess pressure on the compressor inlet but that goes to show the huge difference in heat capacity of that hot water and the fact that this is driven by what's called delta T. The temperature of the water is higher, considerably higher than the temperature of these coils. So the this charge slowed down. The tank cooled off. The water's cooled off considerably. It was 135. Now I can stick my hand in it. It's a good 115 maybe. But I immerse the tank up to about the white label for considerably longer. First time I basically just dipped the bottom of the tank in the water and doing that had raised the pressure up to about 240 and this time it transferred 4.1 ounces much more refrigerant more quickly. It transferred that in, in all totaled three minutes so there's the answer to temperature difference charging. Instead of buying that $300 heating pad, get a bucket of water. It's free. Extreme caution here. What I mentioned about the airflow through the outdoor coil, that's, uh, that's in control of the pressure and temperature of that coil. It's very important when driving this tank harder with this water to charge it only while the pressure is going up if the pressure stops don't let it go down because when it goes down it's feeding refrigerant back into the container shut it off get get a, a significant change the, the pressure increase slows turn the valve handle off stop turn that off stop and then reheat the tank Never ever want refrigerant going back in the cylinder because it's possible it could carry oil or contaminants with it. That's not so likely here because there's two 
72 inch hoses full of refrigerant gas from the tank and it's charging in the low side it's real unlikely there's going to be oil in it don't risk it because once the tank is contaminated then that's a chance of contaminating any other system you work on now the pressure is getting a little bit higher than i like it's um 240 and I'm, so i'm going to stop and my spidey sense says stop don't push it there's no need to and um, let the uh, let the system with the airflow equalize and drop those pressures down in the system then I'll try it again